take uh, we should take the bands off there, and after we do this little speed benching thing, and I'm, I'm going to hand you out like 225, 275, and pretend it's we'll pretend it's heavy. I want to see where you take the hand off, and I'm going to go over some verbal cues like break the bar. So what I, what I tell Tim is the first cue he gets is squeeze the bar. So when you grab the bar, you squeeze that bar. That's what activates your triceps. That's what, because that bar is trying to force your hand open. Yeah, 225, 425, 625, it's trying to open your hand up. So you do the total opposite and squeeze. The tighter you squeeze, that activates everything. Tighten. It's like you shake somebody's hand, squeeze it. Right? Squeeze. Squeeze my hand. Squeeze it. Tighter. Harder. Squeeze it. Squeeze it. Yeah, all the way up. Everything's tight up all the top. Squeeze that fucking bar tight. Okay. Yeah. Like, I mean, I'm not talking like, yeah, squeeze that bar. <laughs> <laughs> squeeze that shit. Okay. I you. Yeah. So the first cue is squeeze the bar. Second cue, like, give me, is if you, did you watch his uh, 600 bench video? Uh, yeah. I was judging it, and the first thing I said to him as he took the hand off, I said, break it. So what Tim does, when he hears that, he doesn't have to think it. When he hears it, what he does, he's, he turns his elbows like that. He's breaking the bar. If you watch the video, Tim takes the hand off, when weights get heavier and heavier, it's like the white knuckle effect takes effect in your body. You'll take the bar higher and higher. And I, we all do it. Like when you start getting up to four or 500, you're gonna get the hand off, you're gonna take it out in the old shit position. But if you listen to verbal cues, and you get your shoulders pinched, and you take it out and squeeze the bar, and then break it, and you break the bar, your elbows turn and the bar will follow. So now you just lower your, your line. Does that make sense? Break the bar. Break it. Yeah. Then the third thing I say is spread the bar. So now you're breaking, then turn your elbows, then you know, typically your, your hands don't turn. So that's on the way down. On the way down. Break on the way down. Then when you press, you spread the bar. You actually visualize pushing this way. But still stay in that same line. Same line. Now you feel, it's hard to do this when you're under that type of poundage. So when you hear it, verbal cues, you'll, you'll do it. So when I say squeeze the bar, that's the first thing you do. Then as I hand off, I say break it, you come out, you turn. You might automatically do it. You might automatically turn your elbows when you come out. Okay. Break it. It just turns your elbows here. And then when you come down a bench, nine times out of ten, most people push towards the ceiling. And what happens is your elbows might turn out. Some people do, they hit a sticky point. But what we do is call we spread the bar. So once you come down and press, you visually try to push it this way. What that's gonna do is activate this price I've had to its full extent. And you push away, you're almost like trying to like, not not this way, push it apart. When I say spread the bar, people think you push it like this. Yeah. No, okay. it's push it apart like this, and then what that does is drive your upper back to the bench too. Right. It's this push. Spread the bar. I don't. No one's ever said it said it like that. Where they push it this way. No, it's actually you. You're, you're going to be pinky or ring finger on the ring. So you're breaking the bar. You're coming down, and then when you push up, you try to stretch it this way. You try to push out. That's called. Uh, that's what I call it uh, uh, spreading or, um, uh, what's the term I use? Uh, break the bar, spread the bar, stretch the bar, spread or stretch, right. whatever. Yeah, that makes sense, yeah. yeah. So it's a lot like the, like the chess machine and stuff like that. Right. Just push it. Right. And, uh, now if you look at my uh, 1075 bench press that I did, the YouTube video, I was fatigued. It was a fourth attempt over a thousand. And what happened was, was I came down with it, and I, when I pressed it, it stopped. And it wasn't moving because I was pressing up. What happens is it comes, it stops, and then I go this way with it. Oh. It's one of my best lifts that I, I have on record, where it was a prime example of, and I remember, like to this day, I was under the weight, I pushed it up, and it hit here, and it wasn't moving. And the first thing I thought was, they're going to take it, because it stopped. And right when I said they're going to take it, I just went like this, and it went. But these are verbal, when you're under 500 pounds, you're not going to be able to think all this stuff. So when you hear it, your brain will automatically do it. It's just the verbal cues. Squeeze the bar, break it on the handoff, because we don't want you taking the heavier weight higher and higher. Most people, including myself, will do it. But when you hear those verbal cues, you have your shoulders pinched already, you take it out and you put a bend to it, it's going to turn your elbows in where they need to be. And by doing so, the bar will drop down where it needs to be. And you might automatically do it, I don't know. So we'll work, I'll work on that after we get the speed bench over. I just want to see this way now. Don't show off, don't do anything crazy. Do it like you would in the gym. Bring the bar down under control, press it three times. Three times. 